Welcome back to our channel Commerce Easy Notes. Today is the continuation video of winding up of a company. In the previous video, we discussed about winding up of a company by tribunal. In this video, we are going to discuss about voluntary winding up. In voluntary winding up, it is divided into two creditors voluntary winding up and members voluntary winding up. Let's see what is voluntary winding up. Voluntary winding up means winding up of a company by the members without interfering any tribunal or court. When the company is ready to surrender and realize its shares for the payment of their liabilities, it can be called as voluntary winding up. The voluntary winding up under the Companies Act 1956 has classified the voluntary winding up into two. That is creditors voluntary winding up and members voluntary winding up. But in the Companies Act 2013, they eliminated the difference between the members and creditors voluntary winding up. Now there is only creditors voluntary winding up with the consent of all the members in the company. A company as per section 304 may be wounded up by voluntarily. Section 304 refers that the circumstances are the situations in which the company may be wound up voluntarily. A company may pass ordinary or special resolution for the dissolution. If the company in general meeting passes an ordinary resolution, it is for two cases. First one is when the duration of the company has expired, the company want to pass an ordinary resolution for the winding up. And also, if any event happens beyond the articles of association, the company want to wound up only by passing an ordinary resolution. And also, a special resolution can also be passed for winding up of a company. Second one is that a notice of the same that means ordinary or special resolutions notice must be given in the official gazette or in the newspaper of the district within 14 days. Third one is if the company is insolvent, it can liquidate under voluntary winding up only by submitting director's declaration of solvency, creditor's resolution, etc. The voluntary winding up is happens only when the company is solvent. In the case of companies insolvent, they can liquidate but they want to submit director's declaration of solvency and creditor's resolution. Next is creditor's voluntary winding up. Creditor's voluntary winding up is that when the directors of the company can't file a declaration of the solvency about the company, the creditors itself argue for winding up of the company. That is called creditors voluntary winding up. We already said that the voluntary winding up is happens only when the company is solvent. If the members and creditors two different persons as liquidators. Liquidators are the person who taken the control of a company during the winding up period. If the members and creditors are appointing different persons as liquidator, the creditors no mini will become the liquidator of the company. The next one is, besides in the case of creditors winding up, if the creditors so wish a committee of inspection may be appointed to work along with the liquidators. If the liquidators are appointed, the creditors can also appoint an inspection committee to assist the liquidators. Next is the rules regarding creditors voluntary winding up or the meeting of the creditors. The meeting of the creditors should be called along with the company's meeting. Next is a notice of the resolution should be given to the registrar within 14 days. Next, the appointment of liquidator should be nominated by the members and creditors. The creditors nominee will be the liquidator. Next is appointment of company, appointment of committee of inspection. The creditors can appoint a committee of inspection for assisting the liquidators. The remuneration of the liquidators should also be mentioned in that meeting. The vacancy in the office of liquidators may be filled up by the creditors. Liquidators to call meeting at the end of each year. That means at the end of each year, the meeting of the liquidators should be called. 
next the last procedure is final meeting and dissolution of the company these are the rules regarding creditors voluntary winding up next is conditions for voluntary winding up for winding up of the company by voluntary certain conditions have to be satisfied in that first one is declaration of solvency for winding up of a company by voluntary a company must be a solvent one next is the directors should want to prepare the declaration of a solvency of the company and also along with the directors an affidavit will check the declaration of the company and also all the audit reports and profit and loss account balance sheet statement of affairs are also checked by the affidavit next it should be made within 5 weeks and also it should be delivered to the registrar of the companies while delivering it to the registrar should attach a copy of auditor's report on profit and loss account balance sheet and also the statement of affairs second point is shareholders resolution for winding up of a company by voluntary the second condition is that shareholders resolution it may be an ordinary resolution or a special resolution third one is meeting of creditors meeting of creditors we already discussed the meeting of the creditors should be conducted along with the meeting of the company the notice should be given to the creditors before calling the meeting next the creditors can give their interest for the winding up by if two third of the creditors have the opinion to wind up the company by voluntary the company can wind up second one if the company have no assets to pay off its debts if the companies are interested by the winding up of a company by tribunal they can do that so this is all about the conditions for voluntary winding up next is provisions applicable to voluntary winding up the first one is commencement it is mentioned under the section 308 the voluntary winding up commences at the date of passing a resolution under the section 304 second one is stopping the business the company should stop the business when the winding up procedures are starts but the corporate state and corporate's power of the company will exist until it is dissolved third one is appointment of company liquidator for doing winding up procedures a company should appoint a company liquidator it should be appointed from the panel of central government or by the creditors this is already discussed earlier next one is powers to remove and fill the vacancy of the company liquidator a company or the creditors can give a reasonable notice to remove a liquidator for removing a liquidator 3/4 members of the company or 3/4 creditors of the company should give a consent for removing a liquidator and the vacancy arises due to the removal may be death resignation or otherwise it should be filled next is the notice of appointment of liquidator to be given to the register while appointing a liquidator the company should give a notice to the registrar of the companies next is assessor of board's power when the winding up procedure starts the power of the board managing director and whole time directors or manager will cease that means will cancel except for the purpose of giving notice of such appointment the board of directors the managing director and the whole time directors or manager can give the notice of appointments but their duties and powers are ceased when the winding up procedures are started next is power and duties of a company liquidator in the voluntary winding up first one is the liquidator should settle the list of contributors they want to call the general meetings they should maintain a regular and proper books of accounts should prepare quarterly statement of accounts the liquidator want to pay off the debts of the company and adjust the right of the contributors from the assets of the company he should be taken due care while facilitating his duties on the company's activities next is appointment of committee the company can appoint an inspection committee to assess the liquidator next is company liquidator to submit a report on progress of the winding up 
the company liquidator should submit a quarterly report on the progress of the winding up of the company to the tribunal next is a report of company liquidator to tribunal for examinations of persons if any fraudulent activities have been committed by any person in respect of a company have been caught the company liquidator should make a report on that to the tribunal and the tribunal issues an order for investigation about that person only after that the tribunal issues a winding up the last one is a final meeting and dissolution after all the statutory procedures have done the liquidator will call a general meeting and presents all the matters all the accounts of the company towards next is final meeting and dissolution when the statutory procedures are completed the liquidator should call a meeting of members and creditors for presenting them the statement of affairs the report of winding up etc if the members are satisfied with that reports the liquidator creates a winding up resolution to the tribunal then the tribunal within 2 weeks after the meeting the company liquidator should send that to the registrar also a copy of final winding up accounts the copies of the resolutions of the meeting etc should be submitted to the registrar within 60 days of the receipt of the application by the tribunal and also if the tribunal satisfied the process of winding up the tribunal issues an order of dissolving the company and the company liquidator shall file a copy of that dissolution report to the registrar within 30 days the registrar will notify that in an official gazette if the company liquidator fails to comply with these provisions he should be punishable with fine which extend to 1 lakh rupees and also one thing is to be reminded that the cost charges expenses incurred in the winding up these winding up charges are paid off from the assets of the company next is preferential payments and settlements preferential payments are the first payment made by the company during the period of winding up there is a preference to all to get paid the preferences are first one all the revenues taxes assesses and rates due from the company to the central or state government or to a local authorities is to be firstly paid next is all wages or salary of an employee which is outstanding all accrued holiday remuneration outstanding to the employees should be paid next contributions payable to the employees should be paid off next one amount under workmen's compensation act 1923 any amount outstanding under the workmen compensation fund is to be paid off next any sum due to an employee from provident fund if he have any pension gratuity extra to be paid off and the last one is the expense of any investigation held by the company should be paid off these are the preferential payments and settlement of the liabilities of a company during the period of winding up next is the consequences of winding up of a company in that first one is consequences as to shareholders the shareholders of the company are liable to pay off the debts of the company so for the purpose of winding up the shareholders are known as the contributories the liability of the present contributory or the present shareholder is limited to the amount of their unpaid shares a past contributory or a past shareholder can only be called upon when the present shareholder cannot pay his debts second one is consequences as to creditors the object of winding up is to settlement of the liabilities of the company that means the liabilities towards the creditors are to be settled so it's the duty of the liquidator to pay off the liabilities of the company such as every kind of liability should be paid off third one is consequences as to servants and officers the servants and officers or the employees and officers of the company are to be discharged when the winding up procedure takes place next is consequences of proceedings against the company 
when a winding up order is made by an official liquidator no legal proceedings can be commenced no suit against the company can be commenced except with the permission of the court next is the consequences as to cost if the liability of the company are insufficient to pay off the liability of the company the court may make an order that from the assets they will take over the expenses of winding up of a company the expenses of winding up of a company will give the first preference next is consequences as to documents after presenting the resolution for winding up of a company if a company proceeds any documents towards the creditors or towards any members in that the letter issued in the name of the company should contain the statement that the company is going to be wound up so these are the consequences of winding up of a company next is dissolution of a company dissolution means when the affairs of the company have been completely wound up or completely liquidated the court gives an opinion that the liquidator cannot proceed with the winding up for what of funds or assets here there is no need of any liquidator next one is when it is just reasonable that such an order be made last one is if there are any other reason the company can be dissolved next is the methods of dissolution of a company first one is defunct company defunct companies are the companies which has failed to commence their business within one year of its incorporation if the company of the name is removed from the register of companies it automatically goes to liquidation or dissolution next is a dissolution by the order of the tribunal the tribunal may also order the company for dissolution on the reorganization or reconstruction of the company or on amalgamation of two companies next is dissolution by liquidation when the liquidator or the company has completed all the formalities of winding up procedure of a company the company must dissolve next is the differences between winding up and dissolution generally the terms winding up and dissolution used to mean the same but according to companies act these two terms are quite different by their legal procedures so let's see the difference between the legal procedures of winding up and dissolution in winding up the main feature is that winding up is the first stage and it involves the realization of assets and settlement of their liabilities if there is any surplus it is distributed among the contributors and in case of dissolution it is the second stage in which company which is finally dissolved next is how to proceed the formalities of winding up and dissolution in winding up it is carried out by the liquidator who is appointed by the court but in dissolution there is no liquidator at all next the duty of the liquidator in winding up liquidator have all the authority over the company that means the liquidator represents the company in the proceedings of winding up but in dissolution liquidator have no such roles he cannot represent the company the last one is debt in winding up creditors can prove their debts but in dissolution creditors can't prove their debts so this is all about voluntary winding up of a company i hope you all like the video thanks for watching